It's a great privilege for me to invite our first speaker of the evening. It is an, indeed an honor to have Professor Dr. Atau Rahman. Dr. Atau Rahman is a world-renowned scientist and is currently serving as Professor Emeritus at the International Center for Chemical and Biological Sciences at University of Karachi and as Chairman of Prime Minister Task Force on Science and Technology. He has twice served as the President of Pakistan Academy of Sciences. He was the Federal Minister of Information Technology and Chairman Higher Education Commission with the status of Federal Minister. He is a Fellow of Royal Society London and Life Fellow of King's College and Cambridge University, United Kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our first speaker, Professor Dr. Atawar Rahman. Professor Taf Sahib, Fatih Nandarat, Assalamu Alaikum. Well, I'll be talking in the next uh, 30 minutes or so about this wonderful and strange world that we live in today, where truth has become stranger than fiction. And every day brings a thousand discoveries, and often serendipitously, often by accident, and they're transforming our lives in miraculous manners. So in the next 25 minutes or 30 minutes, I will take you into this strange and wondrous <laughs> world of science where truth has indeed become stranger than fiction. And I'll, I'll show how objects can be made to disappear, how the ages can be reversed and older species become younger. Genetic engineering is transforming the way biotechnology is performed today and how new developments in the energy sector are going to be affecting our lives in miraculous manner. Let me take you to the first slide. So it's knowledge and innovation that determine progress. And countries that have realized that their real wealth lies in their children and are investing in science and in higher education, in technology and innovation, they are marching forward, leaving others behind. And never before have so many been transformed so quickly as has happened in China, for instance, which is a completely different country from what it was 30 years ago. Even tiny countries like Singapore, Singapore exports last year 400 billion US dollars. Pakistan exports 25 billion dollars. Kya hai Singapore mein? What do they have? No natural resources. A population about one fourth or one fifth of Karachi. And yet they have invested money in, in schools, in colleges, in universities, in innovation. And hence they have forged ahead. So there are lessons to be learned today for countries like Pakistan regarding how to move forward. Uh, this is a slide from McKinsey Global. And it shows that over the next couple of years, by the year 2025, there will be a hundred trillion dollar impact of many of these technologies. A 33 trillion dollar impact of some of the new innovative technology. Trillion, not billion. 33,000 billion dollars of impact of some of these new technologies, such as energy storage systems, advanced materials, renewable energy, artificial intelligence, etc. So that's where the future is. The future is in our investing in the new and emerging technologies which are transforming our lives in many ways. Let me just now give you this glimpse of the future. And first let me talk a little bit about biotechnology and genomics. You don't need seeds anymore to, pluck, to grow plants. If you come to my institute in Karachi University, the International Center for Chemical and Biological Sciences, you will find tens of thousands of orchids, orchid plants, growing there, orchid flowers, growing there, produced by tissue culture, not by seeds. Similarly, you have now transformation uh, of genetics possible. So you can take identify genes, and there are technologies which have been developed. It's like a molecular scissor. You can cut part of a gene, insert it from one species into another and transfer characteristics. So some scientists have taken the genes from the Jumnu ke genes liye, from the firefly, Chamaktai Jumnu, and transferred them into flowers and lo and behold you have now flowers available which shine like fireflies. Similarly, there's a lot of exciting work going on on salt tolerant plants, including in our institution. In the years to come, and this is the glimpse of tomorrow I'm giving, there's no shortage of water in our, on our planet but it's mostly seawater. And one of the biggest challenges for the future is 
food for the population that is growing. If you go walk around the beaches of Karachi, you find many plants growing happily in sea water. What gives them that characteristic? Their genetic makeup. So can we be identify their genes which are salt tolerant, put them into fruits or flowers or vegetables and grow crops and other things from seawater. And the answer, yes, indeed it is possible. And there's a lot of work going on in that area. So you can tailor new plants and species using these new technologies. Golden rice has been developed in which pro-vitamin A is being built in genetically. So children, tens of thousands of children which used to die because of vitamin A deficiencies, their lives are being saved by uh, these genetically modified organisms. Well, what, why is it that you get mangoes only in the summer and not in the winter? Because every plant has a chemical clock and a chemical signaling system which gives it, tells it when to flower, when to fruit. Scientists have learned what that clock is and how to turn these genes on and off. And that is now the new era when you will have mangoes and other fruits being available around the year. This is the tomorrow that we live in. Yeah, luminescent, I talked about luminescent, these are luminescent mushrooms which have been produced using genes being younger. This is now very much possible. Aging is a chemical process. It is reversible. And there are now a number of compounds which have been developed. One is resveratrol. Another is NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide the anti-diabetic drug metformin, and there are others. And they not only slow down the biological clock, they reverse it. So when given to animals, it has been proved uh, in three year, four year old mice, that their body features change and they became like one year olds. So now, it is now thought that this whole area of regenerative medicine and understanding on the chemical basis of aging, for instance, uh, has led to a, a thinking that children being born, born today will have ages of 150 years plus because of these dramatic advances that are taking place. And there are many reasons for aging. I won't go into that, but just show you what kind of things are going on today. In, similarly, you have the re-engineered polio virus has been re-engineered to treat uh, glioblastoma, a brain cancer. Cells multiply them, and then using a 3D printer, you layer by layer, usi patient se lete, so there is no rejection. His own very kidney cells are multiplied, and then by layer by layer, you can produce parts of a living human kidney or a liver or other human organs. 3D printing to produce living organs is now a reality. This is the glimpse of tomorrow that this conference is all about. Kidney patients have to go for dialysis to hospitals. Now, portable kidneys are being developed, which you can wear under a coat and, and walk around with a, with a dialysis machine. It's like a kidney, except that it is not a real kidney. It's a portable kidney machine, which you are wearing. <coughs> Cut off a tail of a lizard, it grows back. Cut off the hand of a person, it does not grow back. Why not? Well, they've discovered now that within the, within the lizard, there are some micro RNA switches. And these are activated. And they are now looking for similar possible switches in human beings and in other animals to be able to regenerate organs which have been cut off. Let me turn now to another area which is particularly appealing to me because I have put in a lot of effort in this area myself. Understanding the human brain and understanding how it works, how it stores thoughts, and how can you recall them. <coughs> Sorry. So they are about, this is arguably the most complex object of our universe, our own brain. Some 80 billion neurons, not million, billion neurons, a see Arab neurons in your Each one talking to some 10,000 other neurons. So 80 billion times 10,000 synaptic connections. Wow and they're all communicating with each other. So when I look at this object, a certain image is immediately stored, and I can recall it. So how does it work? So thoughts are not abstract, as you might have imagined. Thoughts are solid. They're made of atoms and molecules. Thoughts are made of certain atoms and molecules. Which atoms? Which molecules? How are they stored? How are they recalled? These are big questions in neuroscience. We know where they are stored, the hypothalamus. 
in the human brain, but how are they stored? So that's something we have put a lot of effort in in my institute. In our group, we have about 20 US patents which have been granted as a result of our discoveries. We are, and we have been looking at regenerative uh, of, of various uh, diseases which are present uh, in the, such as epilepsy and others, other neurodegenerative diseases. So it's a very exciting area. And we've also been looking at thought storage and thought recall. So these are parts of the brain which are lighted up under functional MRI for, of a normal brain. And in the case of schizophrenic patients, uh, the brain, <coughs> uh, those parts of the brain are not lighted up. The right pay schizophrenic patient or uh, left pay normal. Hai. So uh, what is, how are thoughts stored? So about 20 years ago, I had proposed that thought storage happens because of certain patterns that are formed through folding of proteins present in the, in the hypothalamus by a process known as hydrogen bonding. Since you're not chemists, I can't go into details. But pattern formation is a glycoprotein. Right? That's enough to understand that. And so these patterns are imprinted, and, and logic then becomes a correlation of these patterns. So logical thought is interrelationship all, of all these glycoprotein patterns which have been formed in your brain. And this work has uh, led us uh, to propose this hypothesis, and there is growing evidence. <coughs> and these were the patterns that we had proposed some 20 years ago, and we have a large number of publications and patterns in this field, understanding our own mind. And my latest publication, which came out about uh, four months ago, I'll be happy to share it with you, is the chemical basis of consciousness, chemical basis of thought and consciousness. What is the chemistry? of consciousness. So this is one of the ultimate areas, the golden uh, grail of science to un try and understand that. And very recently, just, just uh, in 2022, this paper came out which confirmed that indeed the folded glycoproteins that we had predicted 20 years ago, those are involved in memory storage processes. So now there's a lot of very interesting work going on on producing uh, brains which can function better through insertion of chips into the brain. And uh, this is a, Elon Musk has formed a company called Neuralink, and, and this, this is exactly what they're doing. Initially, they're trying to tackle diseases, uh, brain diseases, using these chips, but there is also a lot of work going on on information transfer and information into the brain uh, using chips. So these brain implants uh, will be something in the future which will become more and more common in the future. The Stanford group recently published a paper that where they took some stem cells from human brains and these stem cells were transplanted into mice brains and the result was smart mice, intelligent mice because the mice now had uh, brain neurons which were produced from human brain uh, stem cells. And these uh, smart mice, uh, this was just very done very recently, only about a year ago. And these are produced from stem cells. And so this is another area that is evolving, uh, producing anim smart animals using uh, uh, stem cell technologies. Artificial intelligence, we are, we are talking about normal intelligence. But something very exciting is going on right now. That is artificial intelligence. And to talk about tomorrow without talking about artificial intelligence, and makes no sense. So this is a fast evolving area. After chat GPT, and uh, you have a lot of uh, now new developments taking place. Day before yesterday, uh, on Wednesday, this Wednesday, go to the article in the news, which I have published on some applications of AI in business, in industry, in medicine, in agriculture, in education, in research, etc. This gives you a glimpse of what AI is already doing and what it can do tomorrow. But this is only one part of a very interesting story that is now evolving. On the one hand, you have software, artificial intelligence coming up. But on the other hand, hardware is also evolving fast with the advent of quantum computers, which do not rely on the 0, 1 binary principle, but have but rely on qubits. And, and these are hundreds of millions of times faster than normal computers. When these two main horizons meet together, then civilization, as we know, will change and has already begun to change. The first quantum computers are now available and they are being used for solving very difficult problems, such as understanding 
why cancer happens and can we stop it, predicting how the stock exchange will perform, or what the weather will be right, like, like 20, 50, 100 years ago. So these are again something very, very interesting. IBM has developed its, uh, a computer system called Watson, a software called Watson, which has two divisions, a law division and a medical division. And there, there was a competition some years ago between IBM uh, medical division with, with cancer specialists. And, and in the vast majority of cases, it performed much better than cancer specialists in diagnosing the disease and suggesting the treatment. This is already available. And the, for the law, if you have a legal problem, you go to the IBM law. And there again, you can get the answers to your law problems, your legal problems, in a matter of uh, minutes at a fraction of a price of what lawyers will charge. So it's already finding an application. The cancer detection, we talk about the competition, and this is uh, with a great degree of accuracy. So we have quantum computing and uh, mix, mixing with artificial intelligence to create the brave new world of tomorrow. <coughs> And, and with all sorts of applications, and, and this will also help us to understand the origins of our universe. People can now drive cars with thought control. This gentleman has got a device around his brain, uh, around his head, and he's driving this car, just giving mental commands, go slow, fast, left, right, and so on. He's driving this car. So all these grants have been won by us from Germany, from USA, from UK, etc. And there have been 32 civil awards, 32 civil awards to faculty members of our institute, which include uh, one Nishane uh, one Intiaz, four Hilale Intiaz, 13 Sitara Intiaz, yes, 13 Pride of Performance and Tamga Intiaz, etc., etc. 32 civil awards to one institution in the country, which, is, which has no parallel. So I would like to end now by just saying uh, thank you very much. I've given you a glimpse of the world of tomorrow, and I've taken you from the area of biotechnology, from anti-aging drugs, to how genes can be transferred from one plant or, to, or animal to another. So this yeah, is the world of tomorrow. So this clip and to, for Pakistan to march forward, these are areas that we must invest in. Thank you very much.